Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is Marie Ali with Just Gorgeous TV. Today I have me a special guest. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that is Kelly Clemenson. And Kelly is tuning in live from Southern California. Is that correct, Kelly? Yes, a uh, little town called Minto. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, yeah. that is a small town. Never heard it of it. It is a very small town. Nobody's heard of it. People don't even know that it's here, that live around here. So yeah, <laughs> it's a small town. Awesome, awesome. So ladies and gentlemen, I have Kelly on today. He is the founder for Aeropagus Project. I hope I said that correctly. Did I say that correctly? Well, you said it as well as I know how to say it. I, I, it's Greek, so I'm a little struggle with the pronunciation as well, but I think you got it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, we'll definitely learn a little bit more about what it is that you do. Now, Kelly travels to debate on creation. And of course, the reason why he does that, because he is a soldier for Jesus Christ, and he wants to make sure that he debunks the evolution mentality out there that we have evolved through time, when indeed we have a creator and a designer. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome Kelly to our show today. So, Well, thank you, Marie, for your kind introduction. I appreciate that. Um, I do. I'm anxious for people to know the Lord and to us wash away the, the lies that are told in uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, it says, cast down every argument that raises itself against the knowledge of God. And I believe in our society that that is the evolutionary idea. Um, of course, as we discussed with Kent, and as everybody knows, there's parts of that that we're fine with. Right. <clears throat> but the idea that it brought around life from the start or that it is the reason why the speciation that we see around the globe, different animals, it has no, it has no way to do that. Engineering-wise, it, it's pure nonsense. It's ridiculous. Um, I don't say that to people that believe it. I try to be kind. But realistically, the Christian community needs to understand that that's, it's just, it, it didn't happen. I mean, there's no way for it to happen. There's no reason why you should take that belief system, that, I, that and it's a religion, but... To take that and plug it into your Christianity, I just, I run into theistic evolutionists regularly and I, I just kindly ask them, why would you want to put that into your your thought pattern? Why would you want to include it? Because okay. first of all, it doesn't say that in Genesis. It says nothing of that kind. That and is in most awesome. cases, it's exactly the opposite of what we see. Right. What we now, believe, Kelly they believe the opposite. Oh, they do. And yeah. I definitely want to get into that a little bit more in detail a little bit later. Okay. Um, you know, and of course, you know, I want the audience to know when, you know, when did you come into faith? Why mm -hmm. did you choose such a controversial, you know, okay. spectrum of the Bible of Christianity um, mm -hmm. as your specialty? Because what I, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, I have come to understand that whether you're a pastor, a minister, evangelist, disciple, prophet, prophetess, you know, we all have specialties. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. God says that we all have different body parts, describes it as hands and feet. They don't all perform, they don't perform the same function, but they're part of the same body. So yeah, absolutely. I think that that's, that's great that God has the different arms and legs and, and different people to appeal. Because a lot of people, when I start talking about this stuff, like a glazed look in their eye, like, you know, why are you talking to me about this? I don't care. And right. that's part of what you're what you're getting at is how how I came to that part, right? Right. So you chose the creation side. Well, I think of God kind of chose it for me. But let me <laughs> let me give you my testimony. Let me yes, I, please do. Let me see if I can get through it. So I was uh, oh boy to describe myself BC. It was was not was not good. Um, uh, and BC, but by, by the way, BC people before Christ. Before Christ. Christ. <laughs> Um, hung out at the bars, drank regularly, um, did everything that went along with that. Um, but it's, at one point, I got married. I had a little daughter. Her name was Kelly as well. <laughs> and that didn't change much of anything other than the fact that she was the pinnacle of my existence. Everything revolved around her. Um, and at that point, she was going to visit with my, my brother and my sister-in-law, and they started taking her to church. Um, and one day, riding home from church, riding home from work, rather, um, out of the blue, she said that Jesus was the most important person in her life. Wow. And I thought, okay, well, 
you know, I need to keep her away from my brother and my sister-in-law because they put weird ideas in her head. You know me now, and that's how I was then, so that's how much different I am. Wow. Um, and that was about, there was an accident, and that was about three months or so before the accident. Um, the accident happened on a Tuesday, and on Sunday, my daughter came in and asked me if I would go to church with her. And I told her, no, you couldn't have drug me to church at that point. She couldn't even get me to go to church, and she couldn't, nobody could. Um, anyway, the, the Tuesday after that, I was out in a place called 29 Palms coming home, and I got to a place called Joshua's Tree, and a drunk driver made a left turn in front of me, composed, and she didn't survive the accident. Still there. Um, anyway, all that stuff came back. The Lord started showing it to me. And he was, he was after me. He wanted me back. Not back, but he wanted me. <laughs> so anyway, um, I wasn't churched. I'd never read the Bible before. And some of my friends started talking to me about that. And I remember what my daughter said. And I started thinking, okay, well, if she's with this guy, I need to figure out who this guy is. Because she's got, he's apparently got my daughter. And I want to know who, who he is. So um, a bunch of people told me to go to this church down this way called Harvest. So I went there and I started, I picked up the Bible and read it for the first time. And in that condition, I was very happy to see what it said. But I'm a Thomas. I, I'm a guy that has to stick my finger in Jesus' side. That's not to brag. He actually said, you know, those that don't believe don't have to go through that is better. But that was me. Um, so I started reading the Bible. I said, well, yeah, all this would be great. Is any of it true? Is any of it verifiable? Is any of it mm -hmm. even happen? So, he, and I was asking, I wasn't asking, like, is any of this true? I was just saying, is it, is it true? So tell me if it's true. And he's open to that question. I want all of you to know he is very open to that question. If you don't believe that God exists, ask him openly and with an open heart. And I guarantee you, he will show you that he does, because he did for me. He had me reading apologetics books. That's why I say he chose me to do this. I didn't choose it. He chose me. So I read Case for Christ. I read um, uh, Evidence to Man's a Verdict by um, Josh McDowell. I read um, uh, Evidence, let's see, Signature in the Cell. A bunch of them. Phil Johnson's stuff. I listen to Dr. Nino regularly. So I was just, I was soaking this stuff in because I went to college, they taught me evolution, and I knew enough to know that those two were opposite. One right. of them was true and one of them wasn't. Or neither of them was. It could be that neither of them is, but the law of non-contradiction non -contradiction says that two opposite things, they can't be true. They could both not be true, but both of them can't be true if they're talking about opposite things. And I knew much, I knew enough to know that. So I started looking, and I started studying, and I started gathering what the theory actually said. And all of you out there that are listening that are atheists, when you actually read what the theory says happened, you'll realize that it couldn't have happened that way. Engineering-wise, there's just no way that could happen. And that started soaking into me, and it started making me realize that God really does exist. And the best description of him is coming from the Bible. And at that point, Marie, I just, it, it was the best news I had ever had especially in the condition I was in, because I was a wreck. You can still see that it affects me from what happened yes. when I told you my testimony. Yes. But it's gotten a lot better. I didn't used to get through any of it. I was a wreck for probably a couple of years until God had me healed. He wow. gave me enough information where <clears throat> I realized that she's, she's way happier than she ever was here. So they have to deal with all the stuff that I didn't mention was going on. And she's better off where she's at. And that I get to go be with her, like David said, when his son died, he was very anxious when the son was still alive. He wasn't eating, he was praying, he was doing all this stuff. But as soon as the sad son passed away, that was it. He was good, he was doing his job. And somebody asked him, so well, what happened? Why, why did you change? Because your son passed away. And he said, well, I know that he can't come back to me, but I will go to him. So that was another one of the verses that really stuck with me when somebody told me that, because that is the truth. And me wanting my daughter to come back here would be great for me, 
but it wouldn't be so good for her. Absolutely. Bringing her back to this place from where she's at, that would be good for me, like I said, but not for her. She's right. with Jesus, and she wouldn't want to come back here. She's waiting for me to come there, and I'm sure she'll be happy when I get there, but um, she's not interested in coming back here. Absolutely not. Yeah. I'm sure of that, especially yeah. when we believe in what the Lord has to af offer us, especially in the final oh, salvation, yeah. correct? Oh, gosh, yeah. Wow. That's you know, sure. Kelly, that was the most amazing, and I know that there's so much more behind that, but just kind of giving the foundation is, yeah. is what transformed your life. And I thank God for your brother and his wife and especially your daughter. Yeah. Almost kind of sounds like the Lee Strobel story, right? It the does a little story. bit. I was, I was fighting it. Yes. Um, I mean, he yeah, was, were, she was trying to get me to come and um, come to faith in, and she was doing it in her own way, but it was very simple. All Isn't she ever said to me was, Jesus is the most important person in her life. And that's what stuck in my head. She didn't have to go through all the apologetic stuff that I go through with people. She didn't have to do any of that stuff. All she had to do was just say it. That was all. And, and isn't it amazing from just that comment in itself, you being her father, you being a man, as you mentioned, you had to go and find out who this Jesus is which I'm sure if you read the book, I'm not sure if the book coincides with the movie, but The Case for Christ, that was the purpose Lee Strobel went That's after it. to that find out who Jesus was because he was taking his wife. Yep. That you was know. the first one I read. That was the first one that God brought me to read. I opened up that book, and I don't know that I describe myself as an atheist, but I, I, did, I had no idea who God was. And if anybody talked to me about Jesus, I'm polite, so I would stand and listen to them. But I crossed them off the list of anybody I ever wanted to talk to again because they're talking about this Jesus person. But that is the norm, right? That is yeah. the norm because now you're an evangelist, you're a soldier for Christ, and you are out there spreading the gospel by teaching people that creation does have a creator. <laughs> exactly. And, it's and that there fun. is a designer, right? Absolutely. And that it's logical to consider such a thing, but more importantly, he loves you loves you right now I tell people atheists this all the time even though you don't believe in him and you're out telling people that he doesn't exist he loves you right now just as much as he loves me amen he does amen. And you may not like that you may not understand it you may not believe it but it's true he does and I picked up a verse from Revelation that says when I first got into ministry I had the same questions what was you know is this anything we really need to do and one verse struck me that I was, um, I was in church all the time when I, when I came to faith. I still am. Um, one, of the, one of the verses that struck me was in Revelation. It says that the church, when it's talking about the churches, one of the yes. churches, he says, I would prefer you to be hot or I would prefer you to be cold. Because you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. In other words, what do I do with you? Right. He so does not like is, lukewarm people. That's exactly. for sure. Hot is the people that are on fire for the Lord. <clears throat> and I hope to I hope to get that way, and I think I'm at that point a little bit now. But I want him to get me more on fire. Um, but then the cold, and I think the cold describes the atheists. They don't believe in he exists. So I think he's after them. And the ones in the middle are the ones like you were saying that I, I talk to them regularly. Yeah, I grew up in, I grew up as a Christian. You know, you didn't. <laughs> My family <laughs> no. was a Christian. Right. I didn't ask about your family. I asked about you. And um, I was talking to a guy did a couple of nights ago that was the same kind of that same boat. I asked him, "When were you born again?" <clears throat> when you ask a believer that, they usually can tell you. you know, some of them say, "Well, it was you know during Sunday school, whatever." My testimony is exactly when it was because I was on the other side for a long time. Right. But most people that I ask that question of, they can tell you. They can tell you when they were born again. Wow. It may not be an exact minute, but they can give you an idea of how it happened. Because and that is a life, life, that's a life changing, life it's, transformation. It's, it's transformed. Transformed. You turned away, repented, mm -hmm. no looking back. I mean, he says in the book of Luke that we become a new creature, right? Yes. And all well, the past sure. is gone. The first thing he, he healed me of is drinking. <clears throat> the day the accident happened, Praise God. he took every bit of my desire to go to bars and get drunk. He took all that away from me. 
And it wasn't me like, oh boy, I'm going to stop this. I don't, I don't have a desire for it at all anymore, and I haven't from the day that happened. I have no desire to do that anymore. He took it away. Now, there's other things he's still working on with me, but that one he took away first day. I have no desire to do it at all anymore. A couple of questions for you, Kelly. Yes. Um, with the Aeropagus project, yes. when, did, when did the company come into play When did that come into place? So, as I said, I was reading these apologetics books, and I was getting pretty, I, I had a pretty good understanding of, of the idea, ideas behind evolution, and I had a pretty good understanding of the ideas behind creation from reading the books that I read. And I was um, actually coming out of the mountains here in Southern California, I went up with um, a business partner of mine and did an outreach on an insurance agent. And we went up there and did a stand for insurance. And I was up in the mountains and I thought, okay, well, there's a, there's a street fair that I used to go to quite a bit called Market Night in Redlands. And I think I'll just go down there and open up a booth and do insurance there. As soon as I thought it came into my head, I'm sure you've had God speak to you before, but he spoke to me and said, I don't want you to do it for that. I want you to do it for me. I had no idea where that thought came from. I do. I mean, I know, but it wasn't for me. <clears throat> so okay. initially, initially, yeah. you were putting up a booth for your life insurance company, right. and you do insurance on the side. What, what, what is that? What do you do? I'm a farm insurance agent. I've been that way for 30 years now. And Amazing. That's that's my business. Okay. Um, and that's what I was thinking about doing, but God said, "No, I want you to do it for me." Okay. So, with your farmer's insurance company, yeah. birth, Arrow Pegas Project. Now, how um, long has Arrow Pegas Project been around? Um, I think about nine years now. Okay. Um, I got the name. I wasn't like, you know, I just thought of it instantly. This is oh. probably a three or four month project of me, him asking me to do it, telling me how he wants me to do it. And, okay, just, you know, continue with the, with the information that I need. And I was sitting in study with a um, um, pastor at my church, his name is Greg O'Pean, and he was in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. And it got to Acts chapter 17 and verse 19, and he mentioned it. He said the Areopagus Project, and he described the Stoic and Epicurean philosophers. And Epicurean philosophers are exactly what evolution is now. They think it just came about from chance. Okay. Um, so anyway, when he was talking about all that stuff, I said, okay, well, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be going to the people that don't believe and talking to them about it. So that's part of it. And I originally had just the Areopagus and then a friend of mine that is um, a pastor, he said, well, you should call it the Areopagus Project because that puts, that puts the two of them together, not just the fact that it's that, but it's something that you're performing. So that's where that all came about as far as the name goes. Um, it's been changing a little bit. I'm mean, adding things to the website regularly. You guys can go see it. But um, the idea behind Act 17 evangelism, I, I didn't know this at the time because it was just, you know, I didn't know because I'm not that right. Um, but there's Acts 2 evangelism to people that believe there is a God. And then there's Act 17 evangelism, from what I gather, is more towards people that don't. So that's what I was, that's where God asked me to go. And so that's what I did. And as it turns out, that verse is exactly what I'm doing. And I didn't know it at the time. I just figured it was a cool name. <laughs> but as I learned later, it's, that's those two are the types. Acts to evangelism, where the day of Pentecost is going on and the people there believed in God. They just didn't know exactly who he was. And then there's the other people in Athens at the Areopagus Project, that's where it's at, is Athens. And, um, and that is a blessing in itself, um, yes. Kelly, because I know that we're running a little short on time as well, <laughs> but I definitely want to get through and give the people sure. an opportunity to really understand your ministry. Okay. Um, now, you do this um, on your own, with family, your daughter, you know, Kelly. Tell us a little bit, a brief, you know, um, summary on that. Who helps you? Um, project. Sure. I would like to give a plug for the people that come out and help me out. There's been several. Um, Dennis helped me at the start. Um, another gentleman that I met, Bill, we already mentioned. Another one uh, from my church, Bob. Uh, but two, two gentlemen that have been there for, not from very start, but pretty darn close. Um, Ray Weller, a friend of mine, and his son, Doug. 
they're there every single week. They're actually there more often than I am. I take vacations every once in a while. They don't. And they're there to help me all the time. Um, some people from my church, I get involved. Um, I try to get them to come out and do evangelism because I think it's important. So they, I have people come out there and help me out now and again. There's a group, really neat group of kids. The uh, kids are you know, 18, 20, 16 to 20 or so. I call them kids because I'm old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they come out and help me out, and I, and I love it. I, I think it's great that we have parents that are anxious for their kids to know not only know God, but know how to defend their position as right. a Christian, because it's important. People are losing a lot of kids. And, and I, I love that you said that. I love that you said that, Kelly, because it's really, really important and, you know, for parents and people out there to understand that we are losing our Christian children and children um, in a massive amount of percentage right. across the United States because of evolution. Exactly. They're yeah. teaching it that it's true, that it's fact, and yes. we need to provide them. And I'm a Sunday school teacher, and God put it on my heart to do that. And I like kids anyway. But when I, I sure when hope I started, so. <laughs> yeah, when I started thinking about it, I said, "Well, because I I learned the same thing you did that we're losing kids to this theory." Right. And when I do my when I do the Sunday school classes, I'm not doing it right now. But when I I was doing it for three years straight, it took them from third, fourth, and fifth same kids and I wanted them to know that what they believe in is not some fairy tale it's Absolutely. evidential it's logical and it's defendable and I I think it's very important that we do that because it is it's historical Christianity and right. history part is viable and it's it's demonstrable and the creation part is viable and de demonstrable Right. Because, and I think and, they need to know that. And I think you believe the same thing. We need to teach our kids that we don't believe in fairy tales. We believe in reality. Because that's what I learned when I first came to faith. But God you, showed me that this stuff is true. Right. Well, you know what happens is, <clears throat> you know what happens is, Kelly, is that, you know, parents, yes, we do go to church and we learn and we need to understand the gospel, but we also need to learn um, that we must teach our kids why do we believe in God? Why do we believe in the Bible? Who, what, where, and when? And these are the very simple questions that when atheist children or children who do not believe in God that believes in evolution, when they question our children, their back are backed up against the wall because yeah. normally the answer would be, well, because I believe he's true. Well, why do you believe he's true? Well, because he's God. Well, why is he God? Have you seen him? Have you touched him? Have right. you done this? Well, my parents believe in God. Well, why do you? So you can see the question continue sure. to roll and roll. And if our children who believes in Jesus Christ do not know these simple answers to these questions, mm -hmm. they will literally, and I love saying that because of Dr. Kent Heaven, <laughs> start their mind you know, we'll start turning, but like, oh, that's right. In the doubt mode. I believe in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't, right? Because evolution says that we were born right. from rocks and monkeys and whatnot. However, by the way, and I'm speeding up things here a little bit quicker here because sure. of our time, but I love how your booth looks. You have the picture of evolution. Yes. Right? Because what would that, I, I thought that was a perfect marketing piece because when you see that, it actually, um, it'll bring in those who, right? Because if you had the cross, right, the Christ, it's, it's pointless. They're not going to come to. They're you not going to come. Well, I mean, I should, let me let me rephrase that. It's not pointless. But if I'm trying to minister to atheists, and that's what I'm doing, that's what I do. You got to utilize you what come by and say, why is it that you don't have? You know, Bible right. verses up there. Why don't you have a cross up there? Why don't you have all this? Well, and that? that relates to them, right? It does. It, it relates. It's, it's, it's if I have talk. that, and my pastor at my church said the same thing, because our church doesn't have a cross on the outside anymore. You can't see it. Because he has the same attitude. He wants to draw people in. And if those people are automatically kind of aversion to religion, then if you point out that you're religious, then they're not going to talk to you. So when I came up with booth, like you were, you were saying, I have a lot of stuff up there that people don't know what I'm about when they walk by. And Christians come by, will walk by, and they'll come over with the attitude that they're going to witness me. And that's great. I'm glad they do that. 
but they still, they're, they're not sure what I'm about because I have the, the monkey walk, as I call it. Right. There, and I have, I have all the individual, or not all, but some. Yeah, I saw the, the apes timeline, which yeah. is absolutely perfect. Now, right. another quick question. And I do have right. a purpose to draw right. atheists over the top. That's the point. Of the and that is an awesome marketing piece to captivate the attention of the believers and unbelievers. Right. You have both audience now. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Uh, did you do a recent debate, the thirteen uh, Robert debate, or can you tell me a little bit yeah. really quickly what was sure. that about? Um, I've done two of them with him. One of them was on um, whether God exists. Um, his his uh, website is a good guy. I encourage you guys to all of them out there that hear. I encourage you to pray for him. His name's Robert Stanley. He was uh, he's a Christian, raised a Christian. He went to seminary, and then he went to college, and supposedly learned that God doesn't exist. Could be right, and, and and you know, and it's really important for all of us to make an impact. And then the impact is wearing the armor of Christ. Now, let me do a recap here, really quickly, for those who are just you know skipping through or just tuning in. I have Kelly Clemenson here. He is the founder of Arab Pegas Project. He is a creationist. He will debate on evolution. He, he's also someone whose life has tra been transformed by Jesus Christ, by following Jesus Christ through his daughter, Kelly. The Sunday school classes that I'm in, especially when I used to do kindergarten, I tell them, I said, don't think that your testimony and what you say to people, even if they're adults, won't have any effect. I tell okay. them, I'm a Christian because a five-year-old told me about Jesus. Wow. That's where I'm a Christian. It wasn't wow. some crusade. It wasn't anything like that. It was a simple testimony of a five-year-old telling, telling me that Jesus was the most important person in your life. And that's what, that's what caused it to change. So I encourage you all out there, even if you don't know everything you think you need to know, it, you don't need to. God will show you what you need to know when he's, when he got you in the ministry. Absolutely. We don't always need to know everything no. because no. our growth, our <laughs> faith grows and then we become fearless in the Lord. And what a legacy a five-year-old left behind. I, I definitely want to thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, as Kelly mentioned, go out there and check out his website so you can find out where he's at. Sure. Um, the website is areavegasproject.com. Um, Look up, if you don't remember how to spell it, because you might not, it's Acts 17, verse 19. Um, that's where it's at. And the, my email's on there. You can talk to me and send me um, information on what you're doing. I would love to hear it um, so I can pray for those that you talk to. Um, but I believe on, on a general scale, these are the reasons why it is evidential that God exists. Um, number one is cause and effect. Number two is information theory. And the third one is escaping at the very minute. There's a third one involved, um, cosmological constant. Those are three things that we can talk to atheists about, and they're, they're prime examples of an intelligent designer, which is the God of the Bible. And I just wanted to leave it with that because we didn't get to talk about that. Um, but if you guys want to visit the website, it would be great. And there's some videos on there and stuff. I'm going to be putting some fun stuff up. We didn't get to talk about this instance, Richard Dawkins. I'm sure many of you out there know who Richard Dawkins is. Let me just end it with this because this is a great story. Richard Dawkins, who said things about God, Yahweh, that are just you know, off the chart angry. Why he's so angry at some he doesn't he thinks he exists, I don't know. But recently, he started in on a lot. And he was going to he was going to be going to college campuses and saying some of the same stuff about Allah that he said about Yahweh. And the strange thing is, all the college campuses, they told him he couldn't come. They said, You're not coming here and saying disparaging things about Allah. And Richard said, Well, why not? I've been saying this thing about Christians for the last years and years and years. You never said anything to me about that. Hmm. It was funny. It's a funny story, and I'm going to have some stuff up on the website about that soon. Wow. But I, I love it because Richard Dawkins getting a little taste of his own mess. But he needs that. Maybe Mr. Dawkins is going to come to faith, make him realize that God really is real, 
And the reason why people don't want him, we're fine with him talking disparaging things about Yahweh, is that is the true path that they want to keep you off of. If you want to believe in Allah, the community doesn't believe in God is fine with that. Because Satan's fine with that. Anyway, that was an interesting story. I'm going to have that up on the website soon, but there's some videos on there that I think you guys will enjoy. Um, and I hope you go. Maria, I was yes. very happy. Thank you for bringing me on. This is a great opportunity to talk about the Lord with someone that believes as well. And whoever else is going to listen to it. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be merciful unto you. And you as well. Thank you so much for coming on to Just Gorgeous TV and sharing your testimony and just being a soldier and being bold and courageous to go out there and spread the gospel because I know it's definitely not easy facing the pros and cons on a daily basis and the criticisms because it comes with good, bad, and indifference. Oh, but no. after all, our purpose, and I believe you can agree that we are in agreement that we are here to win souls to the kingdom Absolutely. of God. That's what God wants us to do. He's Absolutely. very anxious for us to portray him in the loving way that he is, but also to portray his love is the most important, but also to portray his truth because he is truth. Yes. And he wants yes. us to know the truth and the truth will set you free. I was about to say set us all <laughs> free, right? And with that it being said, ladies me. and gentlemen, Thank you all so much for tuning in today at Just Gorgeous TV as we talk with the founder, Kelly Clemenson, with Arapagus Project. So please, there you go. So with that being said, or you can actually hit the links here and share this video and this testimony to change some many lives or yes. go and check out Kelly down in Southern California. <laughs> all right, everybody. This is Marie with Just Gorgeous TV. May you all be blessed. And guess what? God is good all the time. All the time.